What's up, my producer friends? It's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. Last week, I put out this free sample pack. It's an accumulation of 100 royalty-free percussion and Foley samples that I basically just went around my house and got super creative, recorded as, bu as much random stuff as I possibly could. I actually just got this uh, Zoom H1N recorder and I, so I've been having fun just messing around with it. Originally I was thinking that hopefully I could get some cool samples and potentially do some sound design with them, turn them into some drums and percussion, that sort of thing. Uh, but the samples turned out so good, like raw, that I just decided to put a hundred of my favorite ones into a pack and give it away for everybody. So check the description of this video. There'll be a link in the description if you guys want to download that pack. Anyway, I thought it would be really fun to do a video where I essentially use only samples from the pack that I'm giving out and make some sort of beat out of it. So I thought lo-fi hip hop would be really nice. And so that's what I did. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned maybe some sound design tricks or at least get inspired to be creative. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the whole project. So this may be kind of a long video, but let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is this little loop that I created. But by the way, I just wanna let you know that I am gonna be giving away the FLP file for this project. And we're gonna be going over pretty much everything in the entire project. So you get, should get a pretty good sense of kind of how everything's laid out. Um, but just so you know, if you wanna just download it and get straight to it, uh, basically everything in red is gonna be like drums and percussion, uh, purple is sub, blue is mel melody and chords and leads and then this light green color down here is foley and like effects sound effects background type stuff so the first thing that i did with this project was i w went through my pack and i was searching for something that i could turn into a like a melodic sounding instrument and so i found this uh metal lamp thump and i created this little chord progression which sounds like this So then I added this little lead uh, sort of thing on top of it. And as far as processing goes, basically I have an EQ, uh, another EQ, which looks like it's doing about the same thing. I have a reverb, which is super wide. I have a delay. And then I have this isotope vinyl, which looks like this. It's got quite a bit of warp, uh, some wear, and then 1950s and I changed this warp model. So I exported those two things together and then I brought it back into my mixer, uh, which is this here, it's no longer on the playlist, but I basically added a gross beat halftime on it and that came up with this roughly. So I also added this other bell on top, which was this alarm clock here. So I loaded that in and that sounds like this. And as far as processing goes, I added some EQ, isotope vinyl, a little bit of reverb, and then this M auto pan effect, which is just a panning effect. And you can see kind of how fast it's moving back and forth uh, with this line here. All right, so after creating this main loop, I really wanted to come up with some sort of lo-fi background like record noise tape hiss, hum, that sort of thing, mechanical noise. So I just found a bunch of random Foley samples in the pack and I just kind of loaded them up and experimented with them. So the first thing that I loaded up was this really cool Foley sample. And then I added this electric razor, but I automated the volume. And then I added these water droplets uh, and they were so quiet. I've got like the background noise turned down. So I normalized it. And then I just took a section of it that didn't actually have any water droplets. So like this section back here, and I just kind of used it as background noise. And then I automated the volume of it to kind of drop out and then come back in. And then I do have the actual water droplets at that point. Then I added this paper bag too, just to give it a little bit more texture. So all of that together. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to do was go ahead and create a kick sample. And so I went ahead and loaded up a new project in order to do this. And I chose pretty much the only kick, the only sample that I felt like I could turn into a kick, which is this big thump. 
So I loaded my kick into the playlist and just got rid of a little bit of this excess uh, in the beginning area here. And then I loaded it into my mixer and just put it in mono. The reason for that is that I actually recorded all these samples in stereo. So I just wanted to make sure that it was in the center and that it was in mono. Then I added an EQ onto it and I wanted to get rid of some of these uh, lower frequencies. So like super low frequencies. So I did a cut at around 25 Hertz and then I added another EQ onto it and I just sort of started playing around with it and taking out some of the higher information, some of the higher frequencies. And, um, you know, at this point I'm just kind of experimenting, seeing what I like. Uh, but I ended up deciding that I kind of just wanted to go with a really thumpy, like sort of low frequency bass heavy kick and not really worry too much about the high information. I actually ended up layering the same kick with some more higher information in way later on in the track because uh, I felt like the kick wasn't punching through quite as much as I would like it to. At this stage, that's pretty much all I did. And then I added a sound goodizer on it as well and just brought this down a little bit. Uh, basically, the sound goodizer is just adding a little bit of saturation and, and multiband compression to uh, give it a little bit more punch. So then I added some fruity fast distortion on it as well, just kind of bring back a little bit more of the higher information, just make it hit a little bit harder uh, and just kind of punch through a little bit more. So then I added an automation clip uh, back on the playlist. And basically what I'm doing here is just shaping the way that the kick actually sounds. So I kind of played with it here until I found something that I liked and that was pretty much it. I just exported it and then brought it back into my other project. So next is creating the snare. And basically I'm just kind of scrolling through, uh, trying to find different samples in the pack that may, uh, you know, potentially sound a little bit like a snare. I can turn into a snare. And so I found this small remote drop, uh, started with this, kind of got rid of a little bit of this extra excess and just kind of went ahead and plotted it out on the playlist. And then I found this other sample uh, called tissue paper hit so that worked out really well. I added a little bit of automation to kind of give it a little bit more of uh, just that initial transient and then it tails off really quickly. And I just kind of experimented with it a little bit until I was happy with the way that it sounded. Went ahead, loaded up into the mixer track and added an isotope vinyl onto it. Um, this was just kind of experimentation. I wanted to see if I liked it. So then I added this leg slap too. I was trying to give it an effect of kind of being in front of the uh, rest of the clap or the rest of the snare to kind of give it this sort of bigger feel uh, it can be a pretty useful technique to use sometimes. I ended up actually not using this technique later on. I just basically used the clap and everything hitting at the exact same time to create just one initial hit. And um, I actually ended up adding another sample on top of the snare a little bit later to kind of fill, in, fill out the low end a little bit better because uh, it was sounding a little bit weak. But the next thing that I did was I wanted to go ahead and get some hi-hats going on. Uh, I found this car key shaker loop, which I loaded up and then uh, just kind of experimented with it, loaded it into the mixer, added some isotope vinyl onto it and brought up the wear and changed the era, panned it a little bit, made it a little bit behind the beat, kind of give it a little bit more groove. I found this sample could be a shaker uh, one and I thought that the end of it could potentially be kind of a hi-hat sound. Uh, so I chopped off the rest of like the initial transient and basically just left this tiny little um, leftover it kind of hit from the, the end of it. And so I plotted that out, made kind of a hi-hat out of it. And I raised the pitch all the way up an octave and then put it in the mixer, did a little panning on it, added a little EQ, put on a high pass filter. So I just have some of the higher frequencies passing through there. So I decided to add a tambourine hit on every other snare. And then I felt like it needed another uh, sort of like tambourine flutter or tambourine shake to kind of fill in that area going into the next kick. I added this tam flutter, which felt pretty much perfect for that. So next I found this uh, pill bottle shaker. I used the pill bottle one and I just added it on the kicks. So on the downbeat of every one and three of the measure and that worked out really nice. It gave it really nice sort of oomph and emphasis on that kick. 
So at that point, I felt like the snare was still a little weak. I wanted to kind of add more to it. I added this coin drop five to it. I took out all this extra stuff. So it's essentially just the initial transient hit, very short hit there. And then I, I left it on the third and fourth snare of each measure. So to finish off this snare, I found this uh, mallet hitting a cardboard box sound. And I thought that it would be perfect to kind of fill out that low end of the snare. So I added it into it. Again, I kind of took away some of that extra uh, tail of the sample. Uh, so I chopped that off, brought the volume down a little bit, just kind of mix it with the, with the rest of the snare. But I thought that was sort of the perfect addition to uh, kind of finish off the snare, make it sound really nice. I did add a little bit of isotope vinyl, a little bit of wear. So at this point, uh, I'm definitely liking the direction that the track is heading. Everything's sounding really good. It's time for a bass line. So I found this, um, it's me blowing into an empty bottle. And this is really uh, out of the pack. I mean, I felt like it was the best thing that I could turn into some sort of sub bass. So all I did was I loaded it in uh, and then pitched it down a little bit. And I just started creating a bass line. I was kind of messing around with it for a while. And I came up with this. So I added a little bit of EQ onto this and just sort of boosted these frequencies down here. I did this right around 99 Hertz, uh, at about 2.5 dBs. And then this area right here around 63 Hertz, uh, about 2.6 dBs. And then I added another EQ. And again, I'm just getting rid of some of the super lows. So it looks like I've got a high pass filter going at 27 Hertz. So I actually added a little bit of fruity fast distortion. Looks like this. And then I also added an isotope vinyl, uh, which looks like this. So at this point, everything's coming together really nicely, but I feel like it's missing some sort of melodic element. And I know that I have some more melodic elements within the pack. So I figured I'd experiment with that and see what I could come up with. So I found this metal lamp hit and with a little bit of processing, I've really liked the sound of this a lot. So I came up with this nice pattern, which fit really nicely with the chords and just gave it the perfect vibe for what we're going for here. So I made this sound quite a bit wider with the stereo separation knob on the mixer. And then I panned it to the right a little bit. Got some EQ going on, looks like this. Also got some isotope vinyl, which looks like this, quite a bit of warp depth and then also some wear and 1970 and then i've got a huge reverb going on here the size is all the way up and then i've got another isotope vinyl which is automated in the intro before the drums come in to give it a more worn out feel so that when it actually kicks in it sounds bigger i created this melody out of the same sound that we just used for these chords up here it's the metal lamp hit and i basically created this pattern here So pretty cool. I made this unique, loaded it into the mixer, and I have it linked to the original sample here. So all this processing is going on it, uh, but then I also added some Fruity Delay 3. I added a little M Auto Pan, which is just, again, it's making everything swim within the stereo image, give it this really cool effect. And then I added this Fruity EQ, which I use this just for an automation clip when I wanted to filter out some of the higher frequencies for this one section. I also created this uh, other lead which sounds like this. And that was just another little thing to kind of add on to this very last section here. Again, it's the same instrument as the previous lead uh, with the same processing and everything. So I did do some side chaining on the sub, also the main loop and the chords. You can kind of see what's going on here. I also did, I think, the hi-hats as well, and it's basically ducking out every time the main kick hits. You can kind of see what's going on there. All this is is volume automation. As I mentioned earlier, I did layer this original kick sample with another kick. It's this kick right here. And as far as processing goes, all I did was add an EQ, which looks like this. And from there on out, I mean, I really just kind of spent a couple hours just messing around, probably adding way more stuff than I needed to or should have. 
but you know, I was having fun with it and I wanted to use up kind of some of these extra Foley samples and stuff. So I added a lot of extra Foley. Uh, I did add this Crash, which again, it was the tissue paper, the same sample that I used for the snare. And I just made it unique and loaded it into the mixer and added a bunch of reverb. So that looks like this, this reverb here, also a little EQ and then Fruity Delay 3. It looks like I muted the Fruity Delay 3. So I exported that and created a reverse crash out of it with the reverb tail. So that sounds like that. And then I also put the same reverse crashes here. Uh, kind of gives it like a swoop up effect into the snare. Another thing that I did was I actually exported the snare that I created. Uh, I put it, I ended up putting all the samples basically so that they hit at the exact same time on the beat. And then I exported that and created this snare sample here, which I then layered with this other snare sample, which was the original tissue paper hit that I used. And then I added a little bit of reverb on it and turned it down a bit. And then I added this mallet on top. So that was the final snare sound that I created. Now, as I mentioned, I am gonna be giving away the FLP file. So I don't wanna spend any more time going through all the little tiny things that I did. So if you guys wanna get that, check the description. I'll be giving that away down there. I do wanna mention that uh, the way that I exported this final mix down uh, or final product, was with these three things muted. This was part of the original snare that I had created and that I used to export into this snare. So um, other than that, I mean, everything should be pretty well organized and easy to kind of follow along with. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you enjoy messing around with the FLP file. Let me know in the comments down below if you like this type of video, because I do like making these types of videos and I think they can be really helpful. It's kind of a little bit different than most of the tutorials that I do on here. But anyway, if you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That'll let you know anytime I release videos in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh.